Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, my topic actually is the kingdoms. Uh, and I'm going to go over these objectives, God willing. Uh, what are the kingdoms? The characteristics, how to get in and out, Satan's trap, what are the tests, what kinds of tests, purification, and victory. So as we know, we're living in a new era, an era of understanding the world we're living in. This knowledge, which has always been in the Quran and revealed to us through the messenger of the covenant, it states that there are two kingdoms, God's kingdom and Satan's kingdom. There is a clear distinction between these two kingdoms. In God's kingdom, everything is perfect. There is no disease, no accidents, no sickness, no disasters, no headaches, no flat tires, not even a traffic ticket. There is perfect health, perfect wealth, and perfect happiness. However, in Satan's kingdom, there is misery, poverty, war, oppression, disease, cancer, illness, aggression, terrorism, and all that we see around us which is bad. Now, each and every person on earth is either in God's kingdom or Satan's kingdom. There's no kingdom or place in between. God's laws are exact. It's not relative. There's no maybe. It's either yes or no. It's black or white, no gray zone. Everyone should evaluate their lives and examine it to see if they're in God's kingdom or in Satan's kingdom. There's so many verses in the Quran that God promises us perfect health, perfect life, and perfect uh, happiness in this world and the hereafter. Let us uh, see some of these verses. For example, I was a Allah minash shaitan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-rahman ar-rahim, 10, 62 through 64, says happiness now and forever. Absolutely God's allies have nothing to fear, nor will they grieve. They are those who believe and lead a righteous life. For they enjoy in happiness in this world as well as in the hereafter. This is God's, unchange God's unchangeable law. Such is the greatest triumph. Now the footnote states, most people think that they have to wait until the day of resurrection before they receive the reward for their righteousness or retribution for the wickedness. But the Quran repeatedly assures the believers that they are guaranteed perfect happiness here in this world now and forever. And at the end of the interim in this life, they go directly to paradise, as we see in Appendix 17. Also, 1697 okay, states, guaranteed happiness now and forever. Anyone who works righteousness, male or female, while believing, we will surely grant them a happy life in this world, and we will surely pay them their full recompense on the Day of Judgment for their righteous works. 2215, happiness now and forever. If anyone thinks that God cannot support him in this life and in the hereafter, let him turn completely to his Creator in heaven and sever his dependence on anyone else. He will then see that this plan will eliminate anything that bothers him. 41, 30 through 31. Perfect happiness now and forever. Those who proclaim our Lord is God, then lead a righteous life, the angels descend upon them, you shall have no fear, nor shall you grieve. Rejoice in the good news that paradise has been reserved for you. We are your allies in this life and in the hereafter. You will have in, in it anything you wish for. You will have anything you want. There are so many verses in the, in the Quran that God talks about and assuring the believers of happy life. As opposed to Satan's kingdom that is filled with problems, Satan promises happiness to his constituents, but he breaks his promise. He deceives and lies, unable to make a perfect life for his subjects. For example, in 4.120 we see, he promises them and entices them, but the devil's promise is no more than an illusion. In 17.64 it says, you may entice them with your voice and mobilize all your forces and all your men against them and share in their money and children and promise them. Anything the devil promises is no more than an illusion. Again, 25.29, he has led me away from the message after he came to me. Indeed, the devil lists down his human victims. So as you see, Satan, our most ardent enemy, is unable to provide a perfect world for his subjects. However, God's kingdom is perfect and everyone is happy. Therefore, a question arises, how come a submitter to God alone has problems? A submitter who worships God alone, follows the commandment, tries to lead a righteous life, 
but still has problems with his health, wealth, and happiness, has fears and worries at times. This is because these kingdoms are open, basically. It does not mean that if you're in God's kingdom, you're going to be staying there forever. There's always the danger of stepping out of God's kingdom. And if you're in Satan's kingdom, it doesn't mean you cannot escape and go to God's kingdom. As long as we're living in this world and our soul is still growing, we, there is this danger. Satan has made a promise to God to get a specific share of human. He's always trying to take us out of God's kingdom and back to his. Praise be to God, our most merciful Lord has given us this gift of repentance and redemption to get back to his kingdom at any moment. If anything bad happens to us and we see it's not a good thing, we should reflect. Realize we are not in God's kingdom and try to get back because as God says in 479, nothing bad comes from God. Anything good happens to you is from God and anything bad that happens to you is from you. We have sent you as a messenger to the people and God suffices as a witness. And for also 40 to 30, only a consequence. Anything bad that happens to you is a consequence of your own deed and he overlooks many of your sins. So one thing we should never do is to fool ourselves when we have problems, convince ourselves we are happy and nothing is wrong. This will not benefit us at all. What God encouraged us to do is to find out what we have done to deserve the problem we're facing. And because as we stated before in 4230 and 479, whatever bad happens to us is from us. Of course, we're not going to object to God's system. We submit to his system and realize it is us who brought that upon ourselves. We should look inward and find out where we stepped out of God's kingdom. It is a, if it's a blessing in disguise, it will not harm, harm us to question ourselves first, rather than saying it's a blessing in disguise. It may very well be a blessing in disguise, but no harm in re-examining ourselves, because if it is, then it's all good. But if it's not, and it's a warning to us, a warning sign, we will lose if we don't examine ourselves. Also, we should not say we're being tested and we will be tested our whole life. If this is the case, then what, throughout the whole our life, we're going to be tested with hardship and adversity, then what happened to God's promise 23 times in the Quran, happiness now and forever? What happened to God's kingdom <clears throat> where everything is perfect and not even a headache? Even in the Bible, there is a verse that states, Psalm 91, 11 through 12, it says, For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. As you can see, not even hit your foot against a stone, much less have diseases, illnesses, and so much misfortune. The messenger has explained to test to us, and it's not our whole life. God willing, I will go over them later in this talk. It is very important <clears throat> to understand God's system and God's kingdom because it ultimately comes down to God's omnipotence and absolute power. Does that remind you of something? Maybe the great feud? We had bad thoughts, we had doubts actually about God, absolute authority then, and now to say God's kingdom, you could have problems of any kind, is again put us, put us back in the same ancient position we took. We doubted God's absolute authority, doubted his omnipotence, and thought Satan, maybe Satan can be a God also. Satan is trying to fool us again, and blur out the lines that distinctly separate these two kingdoms, and making this an important fact and only an ideology. It is not an ideology, it is not a philosophy, as sub submitters would like to categorize it so it becomes your idea versus mine, and there should not be any dispute over this. This is God's law and fact. He graciously has informed us about it. We all are trying to make it to paradise. If this is not a fact and just an ideology, then why try so hard to go to paradise so badly? Because there you would have problems and misery, sickness, and what have you. We know that Satan said to God, I will surely get a certain share of your creations, except those who are devoted to you alone. So there is this verse, uh, 1539, he said, My Lord, since you have willed that I go astray, I will surely entice them on earth, I will send them all astray. Except those among your worshippers who are devoted absolutely to you alone. He said this is a law that's inviolable. You have no power over my servants. You only have power over the strays who follow you. So let's dissect these verses. Satan will get people who are not devoted to God. But he cannot get the devoted ones. If Satan cannot touch you, what happens? When you say you'll be happy, you'll be in bliss, remember that bad things comes 
incurred, I mean, incurred by us, but executed through Satan. And so that means that if you're not going to have these bad things, some will be in bliss. Because Satan cannot touch us, we'll be happy. However, we have to be devoted to God alone, which means God is our king, our Lord and master. If you're in God's kingdom, Satan will not have access to us. The only time we have bad things happen to us is when Satan has access to us, and that is when we are not in God's kingdom. Then Satan is allowed to touch us, of course, within the limits that God sets for him based on our soul actions and behavior. Yet there are tests. God tells us about them in the Quran, and we will be tested through fear, hunger, and loss of money. Uh, 2.155, we will surely test you through some fear, hunger, and loss of money, lives, and crops, give good news to the steadfast. The footnote states, the test is designed to prove that we worship God alone under all circumstances. 29.2, okay, the test is mandatory. Do the people think that they will be left to say we believe without being put to the test? 2.214, do you expect to enter paradise without being tested like those before you? They were tested with hardship and adversity and were shaken up until the messenger and those who believed with him said, where is God's victory? God's victory is near. Uh, 3142, our claims must be tested. Do you expect to enter paradise without God distinguishing those among you who strive and without distinguishing those who are steadfast? Of course, there is a purification process whereby God works on our defect one at a time until we get rid of that defect. The way it works is every time we do something that's not Quranic and step out of God's kingdom, something bad happens. And after a while, we see the consequences of what we're doing and learn not to do that behavior. God wants us to correct ourselves and purify ourselves. So if we don't get it with a small mishap, he will allow bigger and bigger mishaps until we realize repent and get back into his kingdom. Eventually, we stop this non-Quranic behavior. God rewards us for our good behavior and also warns us about our bad behavior, though he overlooks many of our sins, praise God. A lot of times when people have disasters in their life, they say, I'm being tested as God promised. As stated in the Quran, if you're in God's kingdom, nothing bad happens to you. It is not in God's system that you are doing everything right and God is giving you an adversity just because. If we're not in admissions process and have an adversity where you call it a purification process or a test, it only shows that we're not in God's kingdom and we are in Satan's kingdom. Remember, God's kingdom is characterized by perfect health, perfect wealth, and perfect happiness. It is a hard concept for many people. However, if we know God as he should be known, then we know that it's easy for God to do. He has a perfect kingdom, for example, in paradise. We always try striving to get there and to have that happiness and bliss. God can make the same for us here on earth. There are a lot of verses about the test. Praise God for sending us a messenger from among us to teach us the scripture as God states in 2.151, a blessing such as sending a messenger from among you to recite our revelations to you, purify you, to teach you your description and wisdom, and to teach you what you never knew. The messenger has taught us there are four kinds of disasters. Uh, one is admission test. In other words, you say, I want to worship God alone, and Satan says to God, oh, this person does not mean it. So he's allowed uh, by God to cause some adversity for him or her to prove that we worship God alone in all circumstances. The second kind of test is educational test. It is designed to grab our attention that we are doing something wrong and we need to correct ourselves and get back into God's kingdom. The third kind is a blessing in disguise. For example, we're trying to get a job or go somewhere that doesn't happen. Later we get a better job or something good happens to us or something bad happens to the place that we're trying to get to and we see it as a blessing. The fourth kind is retribution, which means we are out of God's kingdom and we have done something, uh, something really bad that have deserved such a punishment. The messenger has explained this very well, very clearly in his video, King of Chaos. Whenever we're going through some adversity, we might ask, this question of ourselves. If we are not in an admission process, then which category do I fall in? It is very important to realize God's kingdom is perfect. If my life is not, then I am having, and I'm having problems, then I must be doing something wrong. Satan has duped millions, maybe billions of people into thinking that the righteous suffer in this life, then they go directly to paradise and have a happy life forever. We now know this is a lie. We should not let the devil fool us again into thinking bad things can happen and thus happen in God's kingdom. We're always trying to hold fast to the rope of God 
and to make it par paradise, God willing. We won't make it if we don't know God. God is omnipotent. He can have and has this perfect kingdom. If we think we're in God's kingdom and are great submitters, righteous believers, and still have problems, then we are unknowingly questioning God's power. We should not let Satan fool us again. If we have problems, whatever it is, all we have to do is depend to God, accept we are not in God's kingdom, look in the Quran, find out what we need to do to, to get back. So how do we get into God's kingdom? We have to make God our God. We have to give priority to our salat. We have to schedule our day around it, around our contact prayer, not the other way around. We have to give priority to the Quranic studies. There is Quranic study near us we should attend. We should give priority to believers' functions, for example, believers' picnics and so on. We have to think about God all the time. Remember the verse, whatever occupies our mind most of the time is our God. 3191. Uh, they remember God while standing, sitting, and on their side. And they reflect upon creation of the heaven and the earth. Our Lord, does he not create all this in vain? Be glorified, save us from the retribution of hell. The footnote states, your God is whatever occupies your mind most of the time. The true believers are those who remember God most of the time. See 23, 84, 89, and Appendix 27. As you can see, it's not so easy because we get distracted in our daily lives. You know, and before we realize it, the day is gone and we have not thought about God most of the day. We have to make an effort and make it our habit to think about God in whatever we do and wherever we are. This is how we make God our God. People say, I do my salat. Pay my zakat, read the Quran, go to Friday prayer, and go to Quran studies, but I still have problems. Well, again, God's law and system does not change. Yes, we're doing all of this, but do we make God our God, uh, or do we de do these things out of habit and routine? It becomes automatic thing for us. Do we do them once um, when we go back home? Do we get back in our, in our daily, daily life? Do we think about God? We object, do we object to the things when things happen to us? For example, somebody turned in front of us on the road, we get upset, and though we know that we should stay calm and know God is doing everything and thank God that you know, God uh, prevented an accident. We must honor our words and promises. We must be honest all the time at work and don't surf the internet while we're sitting and trying to do the job. <laughs> be patient <laughs> and not lie or cheat, backbite, make fun of people and have bad thoughts about the believers. There's so much uh, fine tuning we need to do, but all of it is possible with God's help. We have to be honest with ourselves, and when we see things that are not perfect in our lives, search for the wrong things we are doing. Ask God to show us what it is so we can connect, um, correct ourselves. And we have to reach this conviction uh, that as God promised us so many times in the Quran that we can have a perfect health, perfect will, and perfect happiness, and all we have to do is to put ourselves back in God's kingdom. It's up to us. We have to make the choice. Once we choose, we need to follow the instruction given to us by God in the Quran. 535. O you who believe, you shall reverence God and seek the ways and means to Him and strive in His cause that you may succeed. 60 to 10. Once the prayer is completed, you may spread through the land to seek God's bounties and to continue to remember God frequently that you may succeed. Uh, uh, formula 20, uh, that's, I think that's not in there, 2456, formula for success. You should observe the contact prayer salat, give the obligatory charity zakat, and obey the messenger that you may attain mercy. As God has promised us so many times in the Quran that He will make our, life, make our lives perfect here and in the hereafter. If we believe and live a righteous life, we have to reach this conviction that God is capable of giving us a perfect life here and forever. It is okay if a person has not reached this point of uh, life in their submission to experience this perfect life for themselves. However, it is not okay to change God's law and system by believing that saying and saying that we go through tests all our lives and this happiness is relative and I can have all kinds of problems in my life and still be happy. We must submit to God's law. First step is submission. As the messenger has explained to us, once you come into submission, you're going to accept what God says. If it, even if it doesn't, you don't understand, it doesn't make sense to you. He gave an example uh, in one of the audience that, you know, for example, God says your whole life is recorded from birth to death, and you, it doesn't make sense to you. But you accept that, and then you continue to practice your worship until it becomes certain to you. The same thing. God says happiness now and forever. Messenger stays not even a headache. So because God's kingdom is perfect, we accept it and know that it's possible to attain that. Now what all we have to do is uh, attain, reach that certainty. 
1599. And worship your Lord in order to attain certainty. Footnote states, the practice of worship are our means of attaining certainty. Appendix 20. By God's grace, we all can achieve the certainty and go back home. Thank you and God bless. Awesome. Thank you. Our first question is from Elena. Moshal, excellent speech. My name is Elena. Um, I have a question for you, Maryam Jun. Uh, we know from 1331 that the disbelievers will continue to suffer disasters as a consequence of their own works or have disasters strike close to them until the promise is fulfilled. What is your response to people that say that, you know, they, they will continue to have admission tests until they die? Uh, as I stated in, in my talk, then because God's promise is, is absolute. God's promise is not a promise or guarantee that you get, you know, here in this world. And when God says you can have a perfect life here, now, and forever, that means there is a point in your life that you can reach, that you can get to that. So if they are having so many disasters, then like, you know, we, they have to look into their lives. And look at the Quran. The Quran is, is complete and fully detailed. Every time, you know, anybody needs any, any, have any questions, they can look into the Quran and God will reveal it to them. If they have a sincere heart, they can see that. I know somebody asked me, you know, uh, at the conference that, uh, well, how can you tell, you know, somebody's having a good life or whatever? I said to them, well, if they're practicing everything correctly as I see it, and I see they have a perfect life, that's a good example for me. So you can, and, and I think one of the, I think Rod was saying that, you know, in, the, in his speech, that, you know, if there's, there is an indication that if things are happening good for you and you're doing everything correctly, then you know you're in God's kingdom. So you have to get back into God's kingdom. When you're having disaster, you're in Satan's kingdom. There is no ifs and buts about it. Thank you. Ashkan? Uh, mashallah, great speech. Um, so the question I have um, is in regards to, I think, the beginning of, this, of your speech. You mentioned something about stepping out of God's kingdom. Um, so we all believe that once you pass all your tests, you, you get admitted to, into God's kingdom. But then you mentioned something about stepping out. And uh, the question I have is that can that be is that only going to be temporary, or can it be permanent too? Uh, stepping in God's kingdom? Stepping out. Out of God's yes. kingdom. Well, it depends on the person. A person's decision, when, when they step out of God's kingdom, if they don't realize they have stepped out and something hap bad happening into them, uh, and you, they need to figure it out, because God is merciful in letting them know. Once they keep ignoring that, then may, God may not let them know they're out of God's kingdom, and they are led into that direction that they chose to follow. But it's not, it depends on the person. It could be permanent if the person decides not to believe that. But if the person uh, did know that they have stepped out of God's kingdom and they can get back into it. You can always get back into God's kingdom. Thank you. Uh, sorry, can I? Uh, mm, you cannot, sorry. The question. <laughs> We're on a tight <laughs> schedule right now. Um, Solomon, you had a question? Just real quick, uh, um, did you give the same speech? Is it true you gave the same speech at the other conference? Yes, and yes. You were criticized by the MC. He, he get, came up and uh, gave a rebuttal or whatever, a comment about what I said. That I, I'm not 100% sure because I sometimes I forget uh, what people say. This is your view. I know that he, he said this is your view. and. And uh, people have different understanding of the verses out of the Quran. They should get their own understanding from the verses of the Quran. Ashkan John, about the question that you had, the way I understand is that in order to enter God's kingdom, according to footnote of 3186, we have to pass all our admission tests. Then that person is proven worshiper of God alone, okay? When they enter and they do some mistakes and they go step out, that's not permanent. Mm -hmm. That's just a for a little bit. What the people who are plunged deeper into disbelief, they had never passed the admission test. Mm -hmm. So I just want to make sure that, inshallah, we understand the same way. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you. Thank you.